reading from the book of Sirach. God sets a father in honor over his children, and mother's authority he confirms over her sons. Whoever honors his father atones for sins and preserves himself from them. When he prays, he is heard. He stores up riches who revere his mother. Whoever honors his father is gladdened by children, and when he prays, is heard. Whoever reveres his father will live a long life, and he who obeys his father brings comfort to his mother. My son, take care of your father when he was old. Grieve not as long as he lives. Even if his mind fails, be considerate of him. Revile him not in all the days of his life. Kindness to a father will not be forgiven. Excuse me, forgotten. Firmly planted against the debt of his sins, a house raised in justice to you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial psalm shall be, Blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. Blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord and walks in his ways. For you shall eat the fruit of your handiwork. Blessed shall you be and favored. Blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. Your wife shall be like a fruitful vine in the recesses of your home, your children like olive plants around your table. Blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. Behold, thus is the man blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord bless you from Zion. May you see prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. Blessed are those who fear the Lord and walk in his ways. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, put on as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If one has a grievance against another, as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also do. And over all these put on love, that is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of Christ control your hearts, the peace into which you were also called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as in all wisdom you teach, and admonish one another, singing psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, with gratitude in your hearts, to God. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Wives, be subordinate to your husbands, as it is improper in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives, and avoid any bitterness towards them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this is pleasing to the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children, so they may not become discouraged. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let the peace of Christ control your hearts. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Hallelujah, hallelujah. hallelujah. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory When the days were completed for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they took up, they took him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord just as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male that opens the womb 
shall be consecrated to the Lord, and to offer sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons, in accordance with the decade in the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen Christ the Lord. He came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation which you prepared in the sight of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and the glory for your people Israel. The child's father and mother were amazed at what was said about him, and Simeon blessed them, and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is destined for the fall and rise of many in Israel, to be a sign that will be contradicted, and you yourself a sword will pierce, so that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Manuel, and the tribe of Asher. She was advanced in years, having lived seven years with her husband after her marriage, and then as a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day with fasting and prayer. And coming forward at that very time, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were awaiting the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had fulfilled all the prescriptions of the law of the Lord, they returned to Jerusalem. They returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favor of God was upon him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. Good morning, Father. Today we celebrate the feast of the Holy Family. The family of Jesus, Joseph, and Mary. And we reflect today what makes the family holy. The Gospel today is the presentation present the Lord in the temple, the presentation. And what makes the family holy? Do you know? No. <laughs> what makes the family holy? Jesus. Yes, one of Jesus. Is in, is, or is part of the family. Amen. 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 Jesus is part of the family. What makes family holy? Jesus is there. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. So that's the criteria of being holy, to be part, or to, for Jesus to be part in it. And so as we reflect on that, we, this piece of the Holy Family it's an invitation for us to reflect also our own families. Is Jesus part of our family? That question always should always be asked in our daily lives. 
is Jesus part of our families? Because when Jesus is part of our families, there's always harmony, love, and peace. Amen? Amen. Amen. When the second reading, the second reading of St. Paul, the Colossians, St. Paul said, put on, put on, where? On God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bearing with one another and forgiving one another. Put on, wear the, the virtues of Christ, wear the attitudes of Christ. To be part of that, that's our challenge. To wear always Christ's attitude. Put on. Amen. Amen. And when uh, it was reading the part of is it what? Wives. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize for that. <laughs> reacted like inside had a reaction inside. Wives be subordinate to your husbands. You hear that? <laughs> but there's a reason as is proper in the Lord. As is proper in the Lord. Why is be subordinate to your husbands as is as is proper to the Lord? Godly way. Meaning godly way. Do not be subordinate if it's not godly. If it is not proper to the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. As is proper to the Lord. Not always. <laughs> if it is not proper to the Lord, not godly, be don't be subordinate. <laughs> <laughs> this is proper to the Lord. And second, husbands, love your wives and avoid bitterness. Children, obey your parents in everything. In everything. Obey your parents in everything, for this is pleasing to the Lord. And the first reading, in the first reading, for the Tusirah. Kindness to parents, to father and mother, is not forgotten. Kindness, in the first reading. And so the last one, fathers, do not provoke your children, so they may not be, become despairs. So always be an encouragement to your children. We go to the first reading, very difficult reading. The whole, like, I will read this again, that's my homily. <laughs> About the Holy Family. Very beautiful, the book of Sirach. God sets a father in honor over his children. A mother's authority he confirms over her sons. A mother's authority the father confirms over her sons. So they're working together. They're working together. Are you working together? <laughs> no, parents, mother and father, they're working together. Whoever honors his father, whoever honors his father, atones his sins. Very beautiful. Like you're, you're, you're atoning your own sins if you honor your parents, your father. When he prays, he is heard. Very beautiful. You honor your father when you pray, you are heard. That's why the commandment, honor your father and your mother. Whoever honors his father is gladdened by children. Whoever reveres his father will live a long life. You will reach 100 or 90 if they want to reach. Whoever honors his father will live a long life. 
He obeys his father and brings comfort to his mother. That is true. Whoever obeys his father brings comfort to his mother. My son, take care of your father when he is old. Grieve him not as long as he lives. This is the challenge. Sometimes uh, when parents, I mean our parents grow old, we treat them as disturbance or on our way of our own happy life, blocking our ways of our happy life. But the Lord said, take care of you, take care of them when they are old. Even if his mind fail, be considerate. Revive him not on the days of his life. Kindness to a father will not be forgotten. Firmly planted against the death of your sins, a house raised in justice to you. And so, as we reflect on these beautiful words of promise of the Lord, blessings of the Lord to all who obey parents, His holy family. First, we reflect to put on, to include the Lord in our families. And then second, to obey, to honor our parents, and there will be blessings from the Lord. The second, third point is our, our part in the society today. People from many other forces destroys, wanted to destroy the family because the family is the basic the messages, the basic asset of the society. When the family is destroyed, the society is destroyed. We must take care of our families. We must also pray for all those who are in a dysfunctional family, dysfunctional or incomplete, incomplete families, single parent, single mother, single father, for those children raised by grandparents all over the world, let's pray for them. And they are not, they, they are also considered a family. Why? The first condition of a family to be with God. If God is there, that is a family. Even though incomplete, even though dysfunctional, but then they are still called family. And so as we continue in our celebration today, we pray for all our families. Our families here in our community, all of our families all over the world, to have that holy, loving family as the model, concrete, as the concrete example, image of God's will in the world. And then, if we have that loving family, modern family, we can make a difference in the society. Amen. Amen. Amen.